Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Yvette, and I am 11 years old. Until the beginning of 2004, I was an ordinary 10-year-old. Life was great. Then I became ill. If you're thinking now, I look well today, then I thank you. I may look fine on the outside, but on the inside, all is far from fine. I need a new bone marrow, but that is not something I can buy at the shop, unfortunately. But there is another problem. I have a very rare tissue type. You could say I'm almost unique, but I wish I wasn't. If the medical people cannot find a match to give me a bone marrow transplant, then they have no hope. Please help me if you can or know anyone that can. I just wish that I could go back to school and get better and not having to go to hospital anymore. Just seeing my friends like how I used to and stuff. I used to go swimming, um, ride on my bike, but now I can't ride on bike because in case I might fall and cut myself and get an infection. I had aplastic anemia which means that my bone marrow has stopped working so I can't produce my own blood and platelets and then now I just need to keep on going for blood transfusions. 12 year old Yvette lives in Bristol with her brother Solomon, mother Mary and adoptive father David. The whole family are involved in the search to find her a suitable bone marrow donor, her only chance of survival. I, I wanted to help her, but I wasn't a match. It's, it's been a bit hard, but I've tried uh, to get on with it, and I shouldn't complain because it must be harder for her as well, because she's the one with the problem. I tell her jokes all the time. don't like to see her upset. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Like my mum and dad get stressed really easily. Um, sometimes they're happy, but they weren't as happy as they used to be. I said to myself, why do she have to go through this? I wish it was me. Because you don't want anything to happen to your child. You know, she's innocent. And I don't even want it to happen to anyone. So. As life goes by, we just cope. And, but we still, even though she was diagnosed two years ago, we just live day by day. We don't know what the future holds. The illness that she's got is called aplastic anemia, which is a medical term for bone marrow failure. Your bone marrow makes the blood cells. The vets isn't doing that. Um, the hospital, the medical people have tried all the medical options of, in terms of treatment and um, none of them have been successful. Um, so it's, it's, it's the end of the road really, that the only option that's left is, is for a bone marrow transplant. Um, and that's where it becomes difficult and really complicated because there's just um, not enough donors on the register um, and there's not a match for Yvette at the moment. <laughs> Bone marrow matches can only be made with donors from the same ethnic group. There's a shortage of all donors on the bone marrow register, but there's a particular shortage of people from ethnic minorities. I've heard it said that there is a deficit in certain, in certain communities and people coming forward to be donors, but that's not the case. If you actually look at the numbers, what you see is that on average, the number of donors from ethnic minorities is about the same percentage as the number of those individuals in the community at large. But because they're minorities, because there are very few individuals, the chances of getting a donor are uh, quite small. 
to give an individual from an ethnic minority background the same chance of getting a donor as from a majority community, you need a greater percentage of that population coming forward to, be, to volunteer to become donors. Each potential donor is like a, a, a ticket for the lottery. The more tickets you have, the more chances you have to win. The more donors you have, the more likely you are to find a match. Beautician Asma Mir started campaigning for more bone marrow donors when her three-month-old son was diagnosed with a serious illness. Ibrahim had a disease which progressed to his bone marrow. He'd gone through quite a lot. Um, he'd had lots and lots of chemo, um, lots and lots of treatments, and he'd relapsed every time. And the final, um, the only chance of survival was actually for him to get a bone marrow transplant. Uh, unfortunately, none of his siblings matched. I had two other children who were older than Ibrahim at the time, um, which meant that um, uh, we had to appeal to the community. We used to knock on mosque stores and almost beg people to let us hold a clinic there. Unfortunately, we just didn't find a match, and he, you know, and time ran out for Ibrahim, and he passed away um, on the 24th of May, uh, 2002. We just thought that we couldn't let his life be in vain. And after all the experiences that we'd had, um, it was only natural to carry the appeal on after his death. In Bristol, Yvette has returned from another spell in hospital. Her immune system is failing and she's unable to go to school. She's very open to infection. Uh, you have to be very careful that you haven't got any sort of germs to bring to the house. It keeps her friends at bay uh, because obviously they get their little coughs and colds and uh, they can't come to the house. So she is rather isolated. There are times when she's extremely tired when she's waiting for her blood transfusion. It's, it's usually the day before her appointment's due you notice how um, poorly she is. Okay. This lovely sunshine. Yeah. Very good. So no hospital today. No. That's good. The weekend dernier. Okay. So I want you to think what you did last weekend. You make it up. It doesn't have to be. Okay. So your wish list. What do you wish that you had done last weekend? Which of those phrases? You wish you'd gone swimming? Yeah, it's okay then. So you write, let's write some sentences down. So, j'ai nagé. Now, nagé is an activity you do down the piscine, especially on a lovely hot day like today. I'm mostly here with my mum all the time. And Sometimes she must get bored and stuff. And like, she sees all her friends that she used to work with and she smiles when she sees them, so I think she misses them too. What do you want me to do? Can you chop the um, carrots for me, please? If you can do them, like, slice. I, I given up my job to look after Yvette and at the same time campaigning to try and um, find a match for Yvette. Um, it's, it's really difficult, it's not easy. Being a carer full time and at the same time running a campaign is difficult. We do go out handing over leaflets, talking to people, try to educate them. It's all like education. Try to educate them about bone marrow. Uh, some people will say to us, oh, I'm afraid of needle. Oh no, my, I'm not gonna give my bone marrow to anyone. It's so hard. Joining the register doesn't mean you have to give your bone marrow there and then. All you do is you actually give a relatively small blood sample. And when it gets to the laboratories here, we will then use that blood to determine your tissue type. And that's a process which will take a couple of weeks, really. That patient will be put on the register, and at that point, they'll be available for searches. 
that would be a good place. Um, unfortunately, I got involved a little bit later. Since the death of her son, Asma has continued to campaign for more donors to join the bone marrow register. Yeah, and put the posters in the shops. Do you ever do that? We've done that. Before. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Today, she's in North London with Sadal, whose 21-year-old sister, Azel, has leukaemia and desperately needs a bone marrow transplant. They're hoping to get people to come to the local Kurdish and Turkish community centre, where a bone marrow registration clinic is being held. There's a young girl called Aisel and she's 21 and she needs a bone marrow match. Yeah, it takes five minutes of your time. Yeah, it's more likely to be somebody from the same country as you, most likely. Does it harm us? Excuse me, we've got a bone marrow clinic. I wonder if you can help us. There's a young girl, um, his, his sister. I don't know if you've read about her, Aisel. She's looking for bone marrow match. Yeah, if you're between 18 and 43, then you have, you know, young men like you with, who are healthy and fit, you're fantastic. You see, we're limited because, um, you know, there's not enough people like you joining. And my dad, I've never seen him in tears. He just went in tears. Even my family, everyone was shocked. Uh, plus, she's, she's the youngest in the family. And we've always treated her as our baby, you know, our little sister. And she's always had support from us, so she'll always have that, no matter what it is. Um, it's really brilliant how the um, Aesol's brother has made contact with the imam of that mosque. And the imam is being really helpful, isn't yeah. he? He said that on a Friday it's, and Saturday it's... there's more people. At the community centre, the registration clinic seems to be going well. Our main aim is to create awareness amongst the ethnic communities, on this specific occasion, the Mediterranean community, because they're so underrepresented on the bone marrow register that people are really dying needlessly. You've come to give blood today. Do you know what happens from here on? No. What happens next if it matches? Well, you give a small sample now and that's analysed. I'm just worried that do they take too much blood from me? They won't. It'll be a very small sample today. Okay. And um, if you happen to match somebody, then you're going to have to deal with giving a bigger sample then. I think I'll try to do something to get rid of this phobia, but then hopefully... That's right. Just think of the good that you're doing. Feels OK. Do you come here? Yeah. <laughs> Are you related to plasters at all? No, no, no. It was quite easy, very quick. Um, doesn't hurt at all. Doesn't cost much time. It's just very quick and simple. I've done it and um, I was really, really scared. I'm still shivering, but, you know, you, you, I hope that I will save a life. Over 100 people signed up at the clinic and their details will stay on the bone marrow register until they're 60. Sadly, none of them was a match for Azel. In Bristol, Mary and David are also pinning their hopes on a registration clinic they've spent weeks publicising. So we're keeping the vibes going right here. This is the Passionate Sunday. You're in tune to the One Way Flex, the Lioness, and it's all about the brigades. So if you have your time and money and effort, please put it in to make this a special day. This is a child that needs your help keeping the vibes going just like this. Sounds of the Audrey Hall. Smile. Twelve-year-old Yvette Gate urgently needs a bone marrow transplant. Her survival depends on finding a match from someone from her own ethnic background. But the shortage of donors on a bone marrow register is making this extremely difficult. The African Caribbean Leukemia Trust has come to Bristol to help Yvette's parents set up a bone marrow registration clinic. It's the culmination of weeks of hard work. The ultimate thing that we want to achieve is finding Yvette a bone marrow match. Um, and of course on top of that everyone that's registering is registering to help anyone around the world that needs a match so if we can't find a match for Yvette today hopefully at some time in the future someone will come through as a match for someone else. Well 
we're about two thirds the way through. It's um, it's been very disappointing as far as I've been concerned. What about you, Mary? Yeah, I'm very disappointed I mean, to be honest with you. What the, the the people haven't turned out to support it, and I'm I'm, I'm very sad. Really. This is where the black community live, and where are they? Not many people, and there are some people um, outside. They said they don't, they don't want to join the register. I asked them why. They said because, you know, they've got alcohol in, 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 in their blood. So I can understand that, oh, some of them say they're afraid of needles. And you see them with tattoos, you know what I mean? Their ears pierced and everything. So I can understand what's going on. People have to, people have to understand this situation, try and understand this situation, because if it happened to them, what are they going to do? Here we are now begging people to come and join the bone marrow register to save our daughter's life. It's, 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 it's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking, to be honest um, with you. What if it happened to their kids? We actually thought people would be coming, would flood forward, we'd be overwhelmed. But in fact, we had to work very, very hard. I remember the first clinic after his death. It was much harder because there wasn't an actual baby to save. People always like to save babies. We only had one person, um, which led to us um, finding out that, you know, there's a lot of education that needed to be done. People need to understand about their individual contribution, the value that they have towards the community as a whole. And it's not like a situation where you can sit back and say, well, if I don't do it, somebody else will because it's such an individual to individual matching process. If you don't do it, you may be the only matching donor for a patient that's out there. If you don't do it, nobody else can do it. People's concerns about donating bone marrow are, um, uh, number one, you know, is it something that goes away forever? You know, is it a process whereby you actually lose an organ or part of your body? And we have to say to people that no, you know, bone marrow is very different to donating um, a kidney or, um, you know, an organ. Even people who would have some concerns about organ transplantation um, have agreed that there's no barrier to bone marrow donation because it's not an organ in that sense. Um, you're not taking it out completely. I mean, we leave you, you don't take all the bone marrow out of a person. There's still plenty left for them to make, to carry on making, making their own blood. Um, so with, with some very small exceptions and groups that, that don't believe in any medical in, in, intervention, um, there are no specific uh, religious or cultural constraints. Uh, when we work with people from the Muslim community, we try and encourage them by telling them that um, in the Quran it says that to save the life of one human being is like actually saving the life of mankind. You know, that brings us onto another concern. A lot, a lot of Muslim people, for example, are concerned about whether bone marrow should be given only to other Muslims. In the Quran it says to save the life of mankind. It doesn't specify what religion. Mankind is mankind. Once someone agrees to become a bone marrow donor, they may be called to donate immediately, or they may never be called at all. Roy Williams was on the register for 10 years before he was contacted. I'm donating to somebody who I don't know. Um, I don't know where they are, I don't know who they are. I don't know what their situation is. But paramount in my mind is the hope that what I'm doing, this effort that I'm making, goes towards helping that person to survive. I'm on my way, this is the big day. I just hope um, everything goes fine and uh, I'm looking forward to it. So there are two ways of collecting the cells that make the blood, the stem cells from a patient, and which of the two methods is used in many cases depends upon uh, the actual clinical needs for the patient. And those two methods are the traditional bone marrow collection, where uh, you collect the cells uh, by putting a needle uh, through the, the, the hip and into the, and into the bones to collect the stem cells from the bone marrow. And when they collect it, they collect it under general anaesthetic, or else there's the peripheral blood stem cell collection, where the patient is given a short course of hormone treatment 
that releases the stem cells from the bone marrow into the blood system and then uh, the, 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 the blood is collected from the patient and the stem cells are recovered from the, from the blood. I decided to go for the instant method, the way of extraction by the bone. And it's just quicker and that just suits me, it suits me better. My only worry is basically if, after all this effort, the person who I'm trying to help doesn't get any better. But it's just one of those things that at least I know I've had a chance to help. Hi, I'm here to register for a bone marrow town. Oh, fine. May I have your name? Roy Williams. OK, Roy, I'll just ring them for you. Is it the Guthrie that you're going to? Yes, Guthrie it is. Roy will be spending the night in hospital. His procedure will take place in the morning and last about an hour. His healthy bone marrow will go to someone who has a cancer of the blood or to someone whose own bone marrow doesn't function properly. In 2003, Mark Worrell was diagnosed with chronic myeloid leukemia. His disease initially responded to drugs, but within months, he relapsed. Time wasn't really on my side. Um, they told me that the only chance of a cure and the best uh, the best course of treatment would be to have a bone marrow transplant and they managed my expectations quite well and said that um, you know the um, it is quite difficult to get uh, donors for people from an ethnic ethnic background uh, especially mixed race backgrounds which which I am myself um, so the the chances of finding a donor at that time were, were pretty slim through sheer fortune and luck, um, they found a bone marrow donor for me. Uh, on the one hand, I was delighted because I knew it was a chance for a cure. On the other hand, um, I know that there's a serious risk that, of, of, more, of mortality, of, 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 of dying, you know, through the procedure. Uh, I went into isolation for a month and had a stem cell transplant. Um, had radiotherapy as part of that course of treatment as well and was then discharged um, after two months of being in hospital. Uh, Went back home, tried to get into a normal routine. Um, and really, it's just a waiting game at that point. And that was um, two years ago now. So um, I've been in remission for the last two years. I'm back to a, a full and active life. I'm back at work full time. I'm just trying to, you know, really sort of try and put that behind me, do what I can to raise awareness for other people. Um, and, you know, just try and plan for the future. A few days after donating his bone marrow, Roy is back at work. It's been so quiet without you. It's been great. How's things been? Um, busy. So what was it all actually like? Much pain? No, just stiffness. <laughs> just a, a bit of a numbing. Yeah. Just a numbing ache where the needles went in. Oh, lovely. Nothing much. Thank you for that thought. <laughs> <laughs> when I was discharged from the hospital, um, the recovery period was fine. It's just a couple of days of walking on, feeling a bit stiff and walking slowly around. First and foremost, it's a chance to help somebody to survive a, a, dis a disability that could possibly save their lives. And it's such a great feeling to be able to do that. I'll never forget it. It's an experience that you won't forget. And, and it's, a, it's, you know, you get a sense of satisfaction through doing that. Uh, as far as I know, my, um, from the information I've got, I know that my donor, I think, is from, from somewhere in America. Um, and it's a male, and uh, it's somebody that I would really, really like to meet in the future, and I'm planning to do so, um, hopefully next year, if that person wants, wants to meet with me, just to say, you know, how grateful and how thankful I am. And I really want to be able to tell them that, look them in the eye and say, you know, this, I'm only here today because you walked into that room that day and, you know, gave a teaspoon of blood and became a part of the, the, the bone marrow register because without them, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today. For asthma, the quest to spread the word and recruit more donors goes on. After he passed away, we just had a ma massive void in our lives and um, it was really hard to get back to life and, you know, pick life up again. 
but since having her son, you know, life goes on. It just goes to show. It. He uh, and he's bringing back all the happy memories, and it's really good to be able to happy remember all the good times we had with uh, Ibrahim. <laughs> There's, there's so much work to be done out there and, you know, volunteering for this cause has given us, you know, um, a sense of purpose and it's given us so much more and that's why it's a blessing for us. Having Ibi's life has been a complete blessing. There is so much to be done and we need more people to come forward and campaign at the grassroots level. <laughs> Even though the Bristol clinic was disappointing, Mary and David are still determined to find a match for Yvette. The next thing that we want to do is we want to go to the Gambia and have some of her relatives, about 30 of her relatives, tested. We want to go as soon as possible. I mean, um, there's, there's quite a few things that need to be arranged. It's uh, not just a matter of uh, deciding, right, we'll do it. It's not definite that we'll find a match, but it's worth trying. As the parents we want to do everything. We want to sit um we want to sit back one day and say at least we've done everything. I just wish that I could get better, see my friend. And looking forward to all the things that I can't do now, which I used to do. It must be a parent's worst nightmare to be told that their daughter has a serious illness, one that may take her life. Seeing Yvette suffer so much is absolutely heartbreaking. To see her lying in a hospital bed connected up to many IV drips is awful, not knowing if the cause of treatment that she went through would help, and not knowing if there will be a happy outcome. There are over a thousand people like Yvette in the UK currently searching for a suitable bone marrow donor. Find out how to help them by joining the register or campaigning on their behalf by requesting our bone marrow fact sheet. Call our hotline on 08708 505 500. Log on to our website at communitychannel.org or satellite viewers can press the red button now. <laughs>